Good evening, good evening, good evening, my beloved brothers and sisters. Here we are again tonight. I'm excited to come to you because we are going to, as promised, we're going to continue with, to close out our series on the armor of God. And I'm excited about this lesson. I pray that you had an opportunity last week to go through your Bible and to study verses verses 14, verses 14 through, uh, through 18 in Ephesians chapter 6. And that way uh, it won't be just so cold with you tonight because you will have had an opportunity to uh, have your own thoughts and to do some research if you know we get really into it. So it won't be just cold coming off with, with tonight as we talk about the armor of God. And as usual, we start with prayer because we always, always, always invite the Holy Spirit to come and speak through us and be a part of this lesson. Father God, again, we come to you. We just want to say thank you, Lord. Just, just thank you, Lord. You're such an awesome God. I thank you, Lord, that you afford us the opportunity to get into your word and to study your word. I thank you, Lord, that you love us enough to care for us, even in times when we are just at, at, at odds with, with, with situations, God. But you give us a peace that surpasses understanding. And God, even in times like this, you've given us a, a formula of armor to put on, Lord, so that we would be able to withstand the times that we're dealing with now. Thank you, God, and I pray that as we go through this discussion of armor, that the hearers will embrace it and understand uh, the, the blessedness of what you've done for us to prepare us for these times. Bless your word as it goes forth. Bless the hearers. God, may they be, may the lesson go forth with clarity and understanding, and may you be glorified by what transpires here tonight. This is our prayer, we pray, and we ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. As promised, we are going to talk about the armor of God. Last week, we talked about the necessity of the armor of God, and by way of review, uh, in verse number 10, uh, uh, Paul talks about being strong in the Lord, and we, just, we, we share with you that that word be is a command to do something in the future and involves a continuous uh, or repeated action. So when it says be strong in the Lord, that doesn't mean that you just be strong one day, but you continue to be strong in the Lord. We also, uh, we analyzed our reference scripture for that was 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Also, uh, we talked about put on, when Paul says put on the whole armor in verse number 11, and we understand that put on it's a command for doing something, and that is a really, really simple act. And we referred you to Romans 13, 12 for that particular uh, reference. And it's called the armor of God because God prepared it. He prepared it, and he bestowed it upon us. And so this armor is prepared for us by God, but it's our responsibility. We must put it on. We discovered that last week. We must put it on by prayer and by 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 uh, uh, taking on the, the the pieces of armor and direction that he gives us in this in this narrative here, talking about the armor of God. We discovered that there. Well, we we will discover as we go through this study that we're going to be checking in on verses 14 through 18, and we're going to discover that there are three coverings. There's the breastplate, the girdle. And the shoes and we're going there are two defenses there's the helmet and the shield and then there are two offensive weapons the sword and the spear and so we're going to explain what all of those are as we go along in this lesson tonight and we're going to start by in verse number uh, 14 where it says stand therefore having girded your waist with the truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Well, there are two of them in that particular scripture. It talks about girding your waist with the truth. And the truth is simply sincerity. It's sincerity, and that's our girl. And we're going to go to Isaiah 11, 5. So, and tonight we will flip through the scriptures this, tonight. We, we took a vacation a couple of weeks ago. But tonight we're going to go through your scriptures. Isaiah, uh, what did I say? Isaiah 11.5. So let's find that. Isaiah 11.5. Unstick your pages. Okay. And it says, Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, 
and faithfulness the belt of his waist. We're talking about Jesus Christ here. And so if it applies to Jesus, anything that applies to Christ, then that means that it's important to us and that it's, it's important that we dress ourselves the same way Christ was being dressed. And so um, uh, Christ was, was, was girded with, with, with truth. He was girded with, 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 uh, with, with the breastplate. And so what we have here is that to be truthful is to have a real relationship with Christ. And without it, you cannot have a real relationship with Christ. But we have to be truth. And it's amazing that when it started to name this armor, it named truth first. And I think that's interesting because if you don't have truth and sincerity in what you're in your relationship with God, then none of the rest of this really matters because it starts by being honest with yourself and, and to know that, that, that this truth in this area is a commitment. It's a commitment to your emotions to, so that you will believe in the truth. And the truth is that God himself is covered and clothed in, in, in the breastplate and in righteousness. And so when, it's, when it says, uh, therefore, uh, verse stand having, your gir having girded your waist with truth, then that means we start out by being sincere in our relationship with God. That's what that piece of army is. And then it goes on and says, having put on, there's that word again, put on. And you're going to see that throughout this, this study, that word put on. And I want to drive that home because um, it's, like I said, it's up to us to put on all of these virtues. Christ has provided them, but the responsibility is ours. And it goes on to say, having, which means you've already done the truth thing. It's, it's assumed that you are uh, devoted yourself to being truthful in your emotions and your re relationship with Jesus Christ. It says, um, goes on to say, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, what does that breast, breast, I'm getting tired talking here. What does that breastplate consist of? It symbolizes righteousness. The breastplate, breastplate, symbolizes righteousness and in the new testament it's the absolute faith in christ jesus and the commitment to him that's the breastplate that that's that's when it talks about the breastplate that's what it is and it secures and in the in the uh physical contact of it as we see with the soldier with the example that's being shown the, the breastplate secures your vital organs like your lungs and your stomach and it shelters the breast. And the righteousness of, of God is implanted in us it's in, and, and that is our bless, breastplate. And it's to fortify the heart, to fortify the heart against Satan's attacks because you know he will attack us. And uh, uh, our scripture reference for that is... Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. I think we went there last week. We're going to go there again this week. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. Uh, we're going to read that scripture because it talks about, it does in fact talk about the breastplate. 5, 8. It says, but, though, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on, key word, the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. So when you put on the breastplate of faith and love, those are the two graces that God gives us for us to adorn ourselves in grace and love. And you know, grace is unmerited favor and love is just, it, it's just God all the way. Amen. And so when we do that, God himself is the standard for all believers. And when it talks about in, in, in Isaiah, about him being Isaiah, uh, 11 5 when it talks about him wearing the breastplate if God wears it if that's his standard then that's the standard for us too and faith and love uh include all of your Christian graces and because it's by faith that we are united to Christ and by love we are united to our brothers and sisters so faith and and breastplate and all of that goes together because it's a part it's a part of who we are who and faith faith and what faith will do Faith will, 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 will conquer the devil's darts that are thrown at you. But we're going to get to that part when we start talking about the shield. Amen? Okay. okay. So then it goes on to say, um, verse number 15, And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now this is talking about the shod your feet. It's talking about uh, 
being able to, to, to bind on your feet, uh, again, righteousness and being able to move out. And when we think about uh, a soldier, uh, they had those breasts, those shoes on. As a matter of fact, in uh, when David was uh, uh, coming against Goliath, Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, 6, he wore, a part of his armor was those kind of shoes on his feet. And it was to protect the soldier as he went through the, uh, they went through the, the, the rocks and things. It was, it was still uh, safe. It was a safety thing. And it was, it was uh, protection. It was a form of protection. And for us, preparation of the gospel of peace, it signifies that you are prepared and you're resolved from in, in your heart. You're resolved in your heart to stick to the gospel and that you are abide in it and you abide by it and which, which is going to enable you to walk faithfully and to walk safely because your feet are shot to walk safely in, in peace in the way of Christianity. So that, that's, where, that's where that goes because if you have that, uh, it, there, there will be difficulties in your life that you will face many, many difficulties. But when you face the difficulties, if you are, if you are prepared in any piece of armor, you can do it with grace and with love. And not only that, but um, but when it talks about your feet being shot, uh, you some believers believe that it means being prepared to share the word of God, that you are to, the believer is about your father's business. And so you spread the gospel of peace and you spread the gospel. So either way you look at it, it's an important piece of the armor to protect yourself and also to spread the word of God because either, either or both of them uh, are, are perfect or, or what we need in this time, and especially the times we live in. And now we're going to get to the part that talks about the shield of faith. Now this, this is so important because as I said, when we start talking about the shield, the shield is where we, how we, um, how we protect ourselves against the fiery darts of the devil. And so the shield, uh, uh, was, it, it intercepts the darts as they come. If you would look at the example of the soldier, his shield is there and he's able to maneuver that shield in any direction because Satan comes at you from so many directions, so many directions. He doesn't just have a one, he's not a one shot person. Wherever your weakness is, that's what he'll key in on. And so you have that shield to protect you and to intercept the darts uh, from the devil. And some, so you, you might be wondering, well, what are some of these darts? Well, I'm glad you asked. It could be temptation. It could be lust. It could be revenge. It could be despair. And the thing about them, they're going to continue to come. It's not a one-shot thing. I'm going to be despair, but it'll never happen to me again. Oh, they're coming. And that's why we need that shield to protect us and to be there in its place, in place, so that whenever Satan comes at us, we can just maneuver and have that shield to protect us from the fiery darts of the devil. Because, you know, Satan is, um, he's the accuser of the brethren, according to the Bible, uh, Revelation 12, 10. And he's going to send those darts in our lives to instill doubt in our lives and to instill fear and guilt. But there again, as, as with faith being your shield, uh, it, acts like, it acts as an invisible shield against anything that Satan can throw at you. Because they are going to come. The darts are going to continue to come. That's just the way of life when you're dealing with somebody like the adversary that like we talked about him last week. Who he is, how cunning he is, and how he shows himself in different ways. So we have to be aware of that. And then it goes on to talk about um, uh, taking the, hell of sal the helmet of salvation, verse number 17. It says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So let's talk about the helmet. The helmet secures the head. That's, that's the job for the helmet. That, uh, it, 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 it looks at your head and it protects who you are. And the head is the seat of your mind. And when we are, we want to protect that because that is where we have to lay hold of the security of all the faith and all the beliefs that we have about the gospel of hope, of eternal life. And, uh, and when you have uh, protected with, your, with the helmet, 
you won't believe false doctrines and you won't give away to Satan's uh, temptation and despair. Now, Satan's going to try that. Remember, we talked about that. But, uh, but the hope of salvation, it keeps us trusting in God. So that's why we're to, the helmet is to protect our, our knowledge and our, our sincerity and our assurance of the, of the salvation of God. And then when, and, and it says, take the helmet of salvation, which implies that, uh, that it's being offered by God. It's being offered by God. And we're to receive it as it's being offered to us. And so, and it's not, and the hope that we get from our salvation is not one of those cross your finger type hopes. It's the hope that you know something is, you can expect it, you know it's coming. That's the hope of salvation that's offered offered to us there. And then it goes on and it talks about, uh, as far as the helmet of salvation is concerned, it talks about um, the Christian being saved. Salvation is being saved. And you saved from, uh, I like Matthew Henry, I mean, uh, one of my Bibles that says you have been saved, you're being saved, and you will be saved. So salvation offers is in three tenths your salvation, but you've got to be sure, you've got to know, you've got to protect that knowledge. you got to be, you can't be in doubt about your salvation because Jesus completed, he completed the work by his, his, his sacrificial death. So that's your guarantee there. And it's an ongoing work. It's an ongoing work. And because he presents himself as your mediator. So he's still protecting you. And that knowledge, that helmet, protects all of that knowledge. And then it talks about the future work of Christ, what's going to happen in the future. All of that's included in your salvation package. He is, he's, he's already been to the cross. He's presented himself as your mediator. And he's in, a, he's in a saving activity mode where he's continuing to save us. That's salvation. And But you've got to be sure you can't let doubt come in creeping in your mind about your salvation. And so a helmet protects the head and the, your thoughts and your brains and, uh, and, and your assurance of salvation. That's your defense against doubt and insecurity. So uh, God is, he's covering you. And even as we go through, uh, churches are changing these days and you get so much social stuff. Uh, a lot of word is not being preached. So you have to hang on to the word. Because that's where your hope is. That's where your hope is. And a lot of, a lot of people are adhering to some of the moral things that we're dealing with now. And it's really against the word of God, but people are embracing it. But you have to hold on and don't be swayed by what you know is against what God says. And so uh, the, the helmet then, he, he, it, it protects you. It keeps you from having doubts and insecurity about the kind of things that you are to store in your mind and believe as far as the Word of God is concerned. I hope I didn't put too much in there, but that's, that's just what it's about. That's what it's about. And so, again, and then too, the helmet's joined with the shield of faith because as you've got the shield to protect you from the fiery darts, your mind is, is, is constantly, constantly being refreshed because you know who you are as a child of God. And it, see how amazing God is? He just connects stuff together and faith and your, your shield of faith and your helmet are inseparable. They're inseparable. They are part of, of our walk with God. And God has so prepared us that he didn't leave us without what we needed to, to, to walk in this world and to be all the things that he wants us to be. Uh, now, and separate, separately, we're going to talk about, we talked about the helmet of salvation and it, 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 it delivers us, it gives us preservation and it gives us hope and it gives us deliverance from, uh, just bad thoughts and the darts that Satan is going to try to put in your mind. And the last one we're going to talk about tonight, and we're going to spend a, mo a moment here. We're going to talk about the sword of the spirit. Now that's one of the offensive parts of your of your of your armor, and the sword of the spirit, which by verse seventeen says, which is the word of God. Now it's called the sword of the spirit because of the spirit's inspiration in the writers who wrote the word of God. And you'll find that write this note down. We won't go to it in Second Peter one twenty and twenty one, and the spirit. Uh, says it's powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. 
So the word of God is there as your as your sword because with the sword you're able to defend yourself. Well, we find defense in the word of God. In in, in the word of God, we have um uh uh we have examples in the Bible throughout the Bible where Jesus when he was when he was challenged in different situations, particularly in, in when he was on the uh, uh, in in the when when the spirit led him out into the desert and Satan came and was trying to tempt him. Every time Satan was trying to tempt him, Jesus would re would reply, "It is written." So Jesus used this word of God as a defense mechanism against the devil, his arch enemy. And so it's the same for us today. We can use this word of God as a defense mechanism when doubt tries to come into our mind, when we're feeling some kind of way about things and you're feeling down, your, your comfort level is not where it should be. This word, this word, this, this word is, is, is a, it's, it's a, it's a sword to keep those kind of spirits out of your mind. That's, that, that's where we are there. And the word, it's the most powerful repellent against temptation is the word of God. And so, um, because as I said, Christ used it when Satan tried to tempt him in the book of Matthew. And, uh, and one thing I want you to notice, there's no armor for the back. Everything is, 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 is for the front because only the front of the body, it, it implies that knowing that all the armor is for the front, it implies that we are never to turn our backs, never to turn our backs to the enemy, never. You always you face him straight on because remember now you've got, you've got your, your, your truth, You've got your breastplate, you've got your feet shod, you've got the shield of faith, you've got all of that to protect you. And so you don't need to turn your back on the enemy because you're doing what God wants you to do. Um, and our only safety is in resisting, see, constantly, we constantly resist the devil, amen? And we gotta do all this with perseverance. You gotta keep doing it, it's not a one-shot thing. Every day you dress yourself. Every morning you get up, just like you put on your regular physical clothes. If you need to be refreshed in your memory, go back through this. And so you'll know, how do I prepare myself spiritually today to deal with what I will probably deal with? Remember now, we're not, we're not, uh, it's not our boss. It's the principalities that we're dealing with. And you deal with that on a spiritual level. And then now we're going to talk about the resource. What's the resource? Where do we go to get this strength? Where do we go to empower ourselves? Well, let's look at verse number 18. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Let me read it again. Praying always, not every once in a while, but praying always with all prayer and supplication. We're going to talk about what supplication is and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Prayer is the thing that buckles all of this armor together. It, it, it keeps it together. Prayer joins all the other defenses against the spiritual enemies. It keeps up, uh, it keeps us solid prayer does and what we have to understand when it talks about uh it's not again it's not something you do every once in a while it says pray always praying always always mean you don't take a vacation from prayer you continually pray for each other you continually pray for situation always in every season no matter what the season is you pray write this note down colossians 4 2 I'm going to turn to it, but you write this note, and we're going to see what it says about, about prayer. Colossians 4, 2. And it says, let me find it. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. So the Bible instructs us over and over again. And then you pray on all occasions. You, you, you keep up a disposition of prayer. It's a part of your life, your daily life. And, 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 and the, prayer, the Spirit will enable you to pray. The Spirit will make intercession for you when you don't know what to pray. And I'll write this scripture down, Romans 8, 26. Go there and you'll see what the Bible says. And now supplication, it talks about uh, uh, praying always with all prayer and supplication. Supplication is a request 
that's directed to God for a particular benefit. That's what supplication is. Again, it's a request that's directly related, sent to God for a particular benefit. And then it says you pray on behalf of other people. So you, supp you do supplication for others. You pray for other people's health. You pray for their well-being. You pray for their peace of mind. Just like you pray for yourself, pray for others. Because it says, again, in, in this, it says, what, being watchful to this end with all perseverance, which means you keep going, and supplication for all the saints. So prayer is not a selfish act. It's something that we do in, 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 in terms of thinking about people other than ourselves. And I find that when we consider other people, sometimes it minimizes our problems. When we think about where people are, there is a saying, and I don't know where it came from, but there is a saying that's very popular that uh, I complained because I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. So it, it's saying, in essence, pray for other people because there's somebody who's in worse shape than you are. And, 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 if no, and if that's not the case, even just pray for their peace of mind. Because what prayer does, it opens the channels between you and God in the midst of the battle that we're going through. It keeps the line of communication open. And God knows we need to be in communication with God all the time. We don't need to have our, our connection, our line of connection disturbed at any time. We need to have that line open so that we can go to God for anything at any time. And so you pray. And it says, watch thereunto endeavoring to keep our heart in a praying frame. In other words, stay in a spirit of prayer because prayer is the key to all of this. You can have everything in this world, but you don't have a, a constant communicating with God for directions and encouragement. You kind of in a bad place. So you would need to keep that line of communication open with prayer. So that, that's our lesson on, on uh, um, and then besides, James says that effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's James 5, 16. So you go there and it encourages you to keep the faith and to pray for our brothers and sisters. So I hope you've enjoyed our lesson on, on the armor of God because it really enlightens us and tells us uh, where we are in our walk with God. If God loves us so much that he would not let us live in this world without a way of communicating to us uh, how we are to function in this world. He loves us so much that he prepared us uh, to, 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 to fight this battle. We're not out here alone. We're not out here uh, trying to try on somebody else's armor. You, you, you have your own. You create your own by, first of all, having a relationship with God, with Jesus. You, that's, that's key. That's number one, and it goes all the way back to the first one that talked about uh, having you have been girded with the truth, and we know God is truth. So, so we 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 have to start there. That's our starting place is a relationship with God, and knowing that no matter where we are or what we are going through, God knows exactly where we are at all times. But again, He has prepared us. He loved us so much. He's provided us with all the necessary armor that we need to fight this battle of unseen things. Because remember, it talks about we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, evil powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age. So we've got a fight on our hands, but God has prepared us. But it's up to us because over and over again, it tells us put on the whole armor of God, which means you don't want to leave any of this out. You want to have the truth. You want to have the breastplate. You want to have your feet shod. You want to have the shield of faith. You want the helmet of salvation. You want the word of God and you want prayer. That's our full armor. So put on the armor of God so that you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Let's pray. Father God, again, we come before you to say thank you, Lord, for enlightening us and teaching us how to live in this age, how to stand, Lord God, and having done all to stand. Knowing full well, God, that you are our director, you are our provider, you give us everything that we need. God, I pray that this part of the scripture will be visited often 
over and over when we're feeling in despair that we can go here and find how we can prepare ourselves for the days ahead of us even because we know we're still in this battle but you have given us what we need to stand and to make it through and we thank you for that pray oh god that the audience was blessed tonight i pray that you were glorified by what we what we gave out in our lesson and we thank and praise you in jesus name amen good night <music>